<laughs> a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of this morning conversation. My name is Ram Aguko. It is a pleasure being with you today. And of course, this is Why in the Morning. Right here on your number one news station, Y254 TV. We are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. Also streaming live through our website. And that's at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. And of course, we value your feedback. Engage with us. Keep talking to us. The hashtag, as always, is Y in the morning <coughs> on twitter that is uh, at uh, y254 channel and at ram aguko my colleague's handle is uh, stephanie ayet and of course uh, this is youth and politics today we want to talk about matters concerning kiambu county and in this perspective i am with caroline mckenna the senatorial candidate or aspirant for kiambu county Kadusana, Caroline. I sent you How are you Good morning. I'm feeling great. I love your vibe, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she's all sunshiny. Huh? Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's the spirit. That's the energy. Mm. And uh, the uh, people who preceded us on studio uh, have left good vibes here, so we yeah. have to flow. So you have to go with the with flow. With the energy, And yes. that's how you take the cup, the, not the cup, the seat. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, um, I want, if at all you have any questions in regards to this particular conversation right here, if at all you have questions for Carolyn McKenna, uh, you, be sure to send... Uh, uh, the, uh, ask those questions as we continue with this morning conversation. Let's talk about politics of Kiambu County. And of course, Caroline, let me start with uh, uh, um, just getting a glimpse of, of who you are. For somebody who is meeting you for the f first time today, um, tell us a bit more about what you do. Uh, my name, thank you very much, Ram, for having me in studio today. Mm -hmm. My name, like you said, is Caroline Makena Kigunda. Mm -hmm. And I am the incoming Yes. Through your votes. Ume, um, umesema. <laughs> Nisha Sema Kiambu Senator. Ah. And uh, Makena is a leader. And I'm saying a leader because we are in the political space. And what is lacking today in the Kenya that we have is leadership in the political space. So mm. Makena is a leader. A leader who uh, is actually ready to represent the people in the most precise and best way possible. Mm. But, but, but then w why would you choose um, to go for this particular seat for Campbell County? Of, or, of all positions to take, of all positions to vie for, and of course of all the things to do, why politics, why would you choose to go for this? Why you? Uh, that's a very, very good question. I will start by saying, first mm. of all, why this office? Mm. I am vying for the office of the Senate yeah. because uh, currently we are in a situation whereby if we do not rise up to correct the errors that we are having mm. currently in the system, there will not be any hope for the future. Okay. We okay. are like, for example, the generation that I represent today, we are stuck in between a generation. And being stuck between a generation simply means that we have to be role models for our children. And at the same time, we have to be the security for our parents. And that leaves us at a place whereby we have been told that we are the leaders of tomorrow. Mm. And I am very grateful that our tomorrow is here today. So I want to take up the role of the Senate because the issues that are bringing problems and challenges in our society are rooted under the term and sugar-coated under the brand corruption. And Senate is an oversight authority that is supposed to put up corrective measures so as to remedy the mm. corruption. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the space where we are at currently. You realize there is allocation of funding from county government, mm. but to, there is some mystery that appears. There's a mystical energy that happens from the point at which the funds have reached the county government and they somehow uh, dissipate within the atmosphere and but, never reach the but, but grassroots isn't that inchi. You, you mentioned that uh, the problems we are facing are being sugar-coated yes. by corruption. Yes. Meaning it is not corruption. <clears throat> It is actually corruption, mm. but we, we, 
now that's why we are saying sugar coating. Mm. Corruption has been branded by things like tip. I am very passionate about services that are being rendered to the public. And that is one of my main manifestos and main agendas. Mm. For example, in health, when you go to health centers, the services are very, very poor. You realize that you could actually go and spend a very long time and there's no one to serve you. But if you know somebody in that health center, it becomes easier for you to get service. Mm. That also goes to the job opportunities that are available currently. Uh, the youth are being told, knock and the door shall be opened. But when the door is opened, you find that the house is full. What happened? <laughs> there are people who came in through the back door. And through the window. No, yes, through the window. <laughs> everywhere. You, by the time the door is opened, it's all full. Why? Because of corruption. The same thing is extended to all these other arenas mm. where you, you somebody says that I'd like you to come in, but I want you to pay this X amount as appreciation fee. So if you want a, a visa or passport today, there is the appreciation fee, which is actually the mm. main fee. Mm. And if you don't have the appreciation fee, you'll have to wait for a very long time. So it means we have sugar-coated corruption in the name of appreciation tips, and this has made us uh, be a very retrogressive uh, people. Okay. As we okay. speak today. Okay, but, but still, let me let me let me take you a few steps back. Huh? Mm -hmm. Um, because the work of the Senate here, we are we are looking at predominantly oversight. Yes. Um, um, how are you going to bring a difference uh, when we are looking at the senatorial position, and 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 still back a few steps before? Why you? Yeah. Uh, there you said, how will we do it? Mm. The Senate is the legislative organ. Yeah. We need to put up policies and procedures through legislation uh -huh. that will ensure that the, the, there is a stipulated mechanism on how governmental services are provided all right, at all right. the county level. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things. Mm. The second thing is accountability and transparency. They are, th when there is a budgetary uh, location provision, Chances are normally high that it is in a theoretical nature. But when it comes to the practical aspect, uh, it, is, it is a ghost project. So you believe that we, we, we have so many gaps yes, that so are there exactly. in the senatorial position, in the Senate seat. Exactly. And that is where I come in. You ask why me? Mm. Because I have the ability to understand what that job entails and to be able to clearly uh, be in a position to seal in those loopholes and provide that gap that is missing. Mm -hmm. I'm actually the missing piece of the puzzle for my people in Kiambu in the Senate no, docket. All right. All right. <laughs> and, 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 and so far we have so many aspirants who are vying for the same, same position yes, yes. for, for Kiambu's senatorial seat. Yes. And, and, and there are those who are, uh, you know, under uh, uh, parties that are known. And, and there are those who are, 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 are known politically because they have been in politics for a long time. Um, how are you going to jump over all these loops? Because um, you've noticed as if, if you're vying for independent, as an independent candidate or, or in a party, how are you going to jump you know, over all these loops considering we have all these who are uh, considered to be more popular wow. in, the region, in Kiambu County? Wow, that's a very beautiful question, Ram. I sit here today confidently mm. that uh, we are at a very beautiful place in the history of our politics today. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the electorate has reached a level whereby they are enlightened. And this is the season that people are not electing. Po they are not electing popularity. They are mm. not electing parties. They are not electing uh, waves. This is the season that the Kenyan electorate has become enlightened and they are willing to elect leaders based on their ideologies, mm -hmm. based on their capabilities and capacity. And the best part is, I would love to tell you this, that the longest journey in history is always started by a small step. I mm -hmm. could be uh, among the not so famous today, but the fact remains that the leadership uh, ideology that I 
I sell to the people of Kiambu, my mm. positioning and ability to be able to serve the people is what is going to make the people uh, skip and get over all those parties, all those leaders, and be in a position to say that, yes, Senator Caroline McKenna is the one that is ideal for Kiambu County. Mm. Yes. Mm. <laughs> wow. And and, and, and and you believe you can be able to shake the <laughs> let me not use that <laughs> shake <term>. the tree. <laughs> <laughs> the tree has been I, shaken. I, I don't want to use that. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. It, I used it for you on <laughs> your behalf. <laughs> on, my, yeah. on behalf of Ram. <laughs> <laughs> you believe you can be able to, to do that? Not I believe I can be able. Yeah. I am doing it. You're doing it. I am here. And the tree is shaking and the people are saying this is the kind of leadership that we want. This is the kind of confidence we want. Mm. These are the, we want leaders who will not go to the Senate and be backbenchers and bench warmers. We want people who will be able to come and represent the people because that is what the job of the Senate is all about. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling them, Kiambu people, enough of having backbenchers, bench warmers, and those who appear only when there's a motion that is favoring them and not favoring the people. So Senator Caroline McKenna for Kiambu County is here, capable, ready, and on the ballot, actually, I am the first one. So if I could sell that as well <laughs> on the ballot, my name appears to be the first one. <laughs> so it also gives me confidence to endele evo. Yes. Okay, let me, let, let, let me find out from you, Caroline. Yes. Um, what is, what's your thought in regard to the position of the youth, what? especially looking at Campbell County, the position of the youth of Campbell County, are they coming out? Um, um, are we giving our youth the proper motivation to, you know, um, look into a bigger future to grow as individuals because we have issues concerning unemployment and, and, and job creation. We have issues concerning lack of, of money among the youth. And, and of course, Campbell County is, is, is one county that is very, um, it is resourceful in, uh, uh, as a county. What is your thought in regards to the position of the youth and how we are actually um, pushing them towards the wall, against the wall, with lack of money, lack of jobs. Yet at the same time, we're giving them so many promises in this country, especially during this electioneering period. Beautiful, beautiful, Ram. Where has the youth been put? Mm. I remember my opening remarks were, we are stuck between generations. Exactly. And we are the youth. Uh -huh. Here we are supposed to be role models for our children and future children who mm. will be coming for them that have their children still on their knees. On their knees. <laughs> and we are still stuck at a point of us being mm. examples and ready leaders, ready to take up the mantle from our parents and be the security for our parents. So when the youth have been discriminated on, and you find that they're the ones who are facing all these injustices of lack of unemployment being used for political violence or whatever violence that mm. is required when you need people to demonstrate, that's when you call on the youth. But when it's time to give the youth jobs, nobody is considering the youth. That is why I am here today to represent the youth as an entity and say that we have had enough of being used and now we are ready to stand up and take up the mantle of leadership mm. by ensuring that we have one of us because even you you have seen from the past uh, tr governmental trends there are positions for the youth and they will go for our great grandparents to fill them as youth representatives <laughs> so that has left us at, as a hopeless at a hopeless place for the youth mm. so this is the time that we need the youth not to lose heart and just mm. realize that there is hope we have an opportunity yeah. and it is a prime opportunity and that opportunity is now and, and, so and for my in mm. my case when i am um as i vie for the senatorial docket for kiambu i intend 
to legislate over matters that are going to favor the youth. That is on employment. Mm. Right now we have a lot of educated youth that are being that have to settle for jobs that do not even add up. So we have actually lost the hope for education by telling people read, get educated so that you get employment. So we need to correct that and ensure that the people that are qualified are the ones that get these opportunities. We need to have a fair playing field mm. whereby it is about ideologies, capacity and the leadership that one has. So we need to, tra to transition from a society that considers the youth to be given positions as a process of knowingification. Who mm. do you know? That's mm. how you get to places mm. and you get to a point of qualification. If you are competent and qualified. You don't need to negotiate for any opportunity. You don't need to tip. We need to create a fair environment so that the youth can feel protected in that. That is one of the things that I'm vouching for. I'm mm. also one of my one of my main manifestos and agendas is that due to the unemployment factor that we are having today, the youth are actually employing themselves. But when they employ themselves and probably start uh, small businesses, you realize that the same government will implement uh, over taxes, over licensing, and push them again to the same corner that they are trying to free themselves from. So I want to assure the youth, especially the youth of Kiambu, when I am the senator for Kiambu will be able to bring all these uh, issues at the policy table because that is the docket of the senatorial office that is mm. supposed to effect some of these changes. And, so and, and, employment, and, uh, uh -huh. hope, education, restoration of hope, those are the things and aspects that we need to also concentrate on. I'd like to also add, we have youth that are very innovative, youth that have ideas that they want to implement. Just the other day, uh, there was a feature about Kikuyu boys mm. who are actually working with robotics and you find they're actually school dropouts. So what happens to such people? As a senatorial head, I intend to push for an agenda so that, so that we create an innovation incubation hub to nurture those talents, to absorb the youth and tell them, yes, we do not need you to just think on how to feed yourself, but we want to create innovation hubs where the youth can bring in pool of talents, pool of ideas, and we actually have the, the, the capabilities as the youth. The only thing we lack are opportunities. Now, now let, me, let, let me get your thought in regards to this particular issue here, because still, um, on the youth because um, most of them, a majority of the youth are the ones who are watching us today. Yes. I'm looking at Kiambu County that had been one of the 23 counties mapped out mm -hmm. by the uh, National Cohesion and Integration Commission that the NCIC uh, uh, in February list as uh, possible hotspots for violence before, during and after uh, August elections. But right now, at least there's some good news that we are getting that uh, Kiambu is among the counties that have been removed from the NCIC list for violent hotspots. So, yes, Kiambu County has been removed. And, mm. and, and of course, a big thanks to our, 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 our officials in the security sector that have ensured that is happening. Now, the politicians that we've got and our leaders also have a role to play in regards to ensuring security and peace, mm. especially before, during, and after elections. You know, uh, what's your, you, you, what are your thoughts in regards to that particular aspect of peace and, 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 and cohesion in Kiambu County during this particular electionary period? Wow. Ram, today all your questions are gold, are golden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When I started my campaigns, mm -hmm. Actually, one of my main, when you, when you check out my agendas and one of my main campaign elements was that I am a peace advocate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I had a slogan that says, Siasa za amani bila fujo na pesa. Mm. And to demystify or to explain further, to elaborate on the meaning, deeper meaning of this statement is simply to say mm. that we are, advo I personally, I am advocating for peaceful campaigning, peaceful 
elections and peaceful after the elections. Because we need to realize that politics is not the end of the world. And we have put so much energy on this political electioneering uh, season that it is actually detrimental even to the economy. The reason as to why we are having also the rate of inflation today is because there are so many businesses that are currently at a limbo because they do not want to bring in stuff, they do not want to invest, everybody is just uh, sitting and watching to see what will happen in our in our economic uh, field after the election. So mm. I want to call upon the youth today and tell them, do not allow anyone to use you for violence. Because you realize that w it's very easy for the leaders to call on the youth to go and fight. But mm. the truth of the matter is that you'll realize that none of their children or their kin is part of it. So if your kin is not there, then why do I want anybody else child to be there? So I will tell my people of Kiambu and the youth of Kiambu to Sikubali, Kutumika, Kueneza, Vita, Zaki, Siasa. Mm. And why Siasa Zamani Bila uh, Bila Bila fujo na pesa is that we do not want violence and do not be paid. Because what happens is that the euphoria of elections, mm. you will get paid. Handout. Yes, the handout. Mm. Because the handout thing is what is also crippling us right now. They think ukiendo upatia youth miambili, they will sing and jump about you. And sometimes they will because of how they've been pushed to the corner. So I want to enlighten them and tell them, just realize I am in the political space today. But before politics, I am a leader. That's but why you know, I started by saying we are leaders. So politics. You know, even, if, even as leaders, mm -hmm. leaders take advantage of these youths. Some leaders take advantage of these youths. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm looking at, for example, the border border sector. Uh -huh. Politicians take advantage of the border border sector, which is a place where uh -huh. youths can actually get good jobs. But now we are seeing them being taken advantage of. Yes. Actually, you've, you've mixed two words that I'd like us to isolate. Okay. Politician and leader. We mm. find that we have politicians in Kenya, mm. and to these politicians, the only thing and the only way they see the voter is, is just a vote. Mm. And that's why they get the votes, go uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the presidency, you go to mm -hmm. state house, you go mm. to parliament, mm -hmm. you go to county assemblies, and they do their things, and things disappear, as it never gets them as a politician. And now there is this thing that is a leader. Mm. A leader is different from a politician. A leader will see the person beyond the vote. Will see themselves as being the ones that are actually supposed to lead from the forefront. Mm. A leader will not demolish and destroy the people. Will build and bring up the people. So what we need to demystify in today's political space is who a leader is versus who a politician is. Are you is. electing a leader or a, are politician. You, or a politician? You got it. Ramninge kugotea batu kombali. Okay. <laughs> but now, still, we should stop taking advantage of these youths, especially in the border border system. Because they're the ones that we see on TV. And now, guess what? It's uh, not even that we should stop taking advantage. The youth should refuse to be used. Correct. <laughs> the youth should refuse to be used because we have been enlightened, we are aware, and we will have to forge a different, uh, a different channel going forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I believe that we can, and, and, and this time round, because I'm seeing youths coming up yes. to vie for political seats, <laughs> Or for leadership position. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Trump. Sorry. Scratch that. <laughs> but they're coming out. Yes. They're coming out. Now, um, uh, let me move to, to yet another thing now. Because you've, you've managed to um, get to this level where you are in. Yes. But there's the aspect of gender. Women. H how far... Um, are you and, and how has your journey be, been so far because at some point yes we must say it as it is that there is some discrimination when it comes to gender especially women vying for political seats 
especially when a woman is the one that is saying that they are going to be at the forefront among many men vying for political. Now, I'm, I'm not saying it could be there for mm. you, but what I'm saying is how, how has it been, especially looking at this fight for gender balance, gender equality, and gender equity, vying for this senatorial position for Campbell County? Uh, that is a beautiful uh, question. First of all, the gender has been discriminated, but uh, like for I, I personally, mm. in Kiambu County, yeah. as I am vying for the senator docket, <laughs> sorry to say, to say this on air, but sometimes I forget that I am a woman because I do not want to play the woman card. Mm. Because sometimes uh, the woman card is where you want to, to get favor. But I come, I have actually gone on the ground and mm. there is not a single time that anybody has said that you are a woman. In fact, mm. in uh, my social media pages, when you check it out, mm -hmm. there's a post I went to Thika. And when I was uh, interacting with the business people, a man stood up and said, wow, Senator Wetu mm. Mama. Senator Mama wa Kwanza wa Kiambu. Mm. And I said, yeah, kudos. So they've actually embraced it. And the beauty is the fact that with the two-third gender rule that uh, is in our problem. current constitution, <laughs> it is still a teething problem, but we must mm. appreciate the milestones that we have made. Mm -hmm. The fact remains that even currently, when there was the nomination of candidates by political parties, IEBC issued a statement that all the political parties that are, uh, pa are submitting nominated names, mm. they must be, be compliant to the two-third gender rule. And mm. many political parties, especially uh, including the one that I represent today, which is KNC, Kenya National Congress, actually complied to that uh, gender rule. A few did not comply, and there was a court ruling that actually dismissed that. So, which mm. means if IEBC had sent it, sent the word first, and they wanted to ensure that they stick to the two-third gender rule, mm. that is a milestone. On the other hand, we have seen right now, uh, despite and in spite of whatever coalition you support, it is a very major milestone that we have uh, Honorable Martha Karua as one of the of the running mates mm. to one of the political uh, candidates for presidency. Mm -hmm. And currently, the female gender, I feel, is at the best time in history, uh, where we have almost, like for I, from Kiambu, all the male governors, their running mates and their deputies are actually women. women so yeah. it has mm. sent a very good uh, precedence, and we have made milestones. We are not yet there. But I acknowledge where we have reached, and mm. I personally don't feel disadvantaged at all as a woman. Mm. In, find, in fact, I find it uh, as an added advantage. When you okay. get, when I have gone to the grassroots, I've found people embracing the women leadership because you'll realize that uh, you, mo most men will always say, come and see your mama yangu. Kama siyo mama. So kama siyo mama, mm. ikifika mpaka saizi wakati wa uongozi, I want them to say kama siyo mama. Kama siyo mama, Caroline McKenna mm. for Kiambu Senator. Mm. To be very specific. <laughs> <laughs> I love your approach. <laughs> okay. uh -huh. Yeah, so... I am at a, I'm at a good space. Mm. I don't feel uh, discriminated or rather uh, the, the, the earlier show was talking it, about the mindset. My mindset is not even, I do not, I, I come in, I come and uh, offer my services and ask for the electorate of Kiambu to vote me in, in as their senator. Not mm. because I am a woman, but because I am a leader who is capable of pushing and propelling the agendas of the people of Kiambu with excellence, dedication, and commitment. Mm. So that's the card that I am using. And that's why mm. the, the position that I'm vying for mm. is not uh, isolated or set apart just for the women wow, in wow. Kenya. I want us to take a short break. Sure. And then we'll be back. And of course, after, we, after, after this break, we just want to touch on a few things concerning your manifesto. And the, the things that, that you believe in. I, let me just read what you said. Mm -hmm. You said, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Precisely. 
Precisely. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a short break. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, with Carolyn McKenna, the senatorial aspirant for Kiambu County after this break. And, of course, keep talking to us, keep engaging with us. We shall be back in a bit.